Hey, hello everybody, it's your boy Durf, and welcome back to Skrip Miknik. We're gonna be checking out this special car that I built, and as you can see, uh, if I press W, the car goes forward, S goes back, but if I press A and D, the steering actually doesn't do anything. So how do we steer this car? We actually steer it with the camera. Yes, this is another camera-controlled video. So this car will steer wherever you point the camera. Now this doesn't really offer any benefits other than freeing up A and D, so I'm not exactly sure what the point of this is, but I don't really need a point to do anything that I do. I just sort of do it, without thinking. And yes, this is a continuation of the previous camera controlled videos, where I show you guys how to build these tank steering systems, where you convert WASD to the tank steering, like you have only one bearing for each of these wheels. There you go, just one bearing for each of the wheels, and you have the full WASD tank steering system. And I also show you how to do the uh, turret, camera controlled turrets, so you just point your camera where you want to shoot. So we're continuing with that series of videos with a camera controlled car steering. Let's get into it. So as I mentioned before, this car will steer in whatever direction you point your camera in. And the interesting part about this is the steering won't oversteer even if you try to point it, uh, if, even if you try to look behind you, it's not going to oversteer. And another interesting point about that is that this car also works in reverse as well. So even though you're looking in reverse, I'm pressing S to look in reverse, but if I look over here to the to the, the camera's right, the car will actually turn to the left to go reverse in that direction. This is actually a bad example because I'm going over all these bumps. So let's, um, let's go back over to that uh, flat area. Alright, so if I'm going in reverse and I want to steer around, I just look to where I want to steer. I don't have to worry about which way is left and which way is right in reverse. I know, I, I, I'm not sure if you guys do, but I get confused about that all the time if I'm driving a car in reverse. I f switch my left and right all the time, and I end up steering the wrong way. But this makes it a lot easier because I just look to where I want to go, and the car steers in that direction. Now it does make it a little bit confusing, because like a lot of people are definitely used to the WASD steering for cars. Um, but this does free up A and D for other options. For example, let's, uh, let's see if we can actually use up A and D for some spud guns. We'll just stick on some spud guns, doesn't really matter how pretty this looks. Uh, we're gonna stick on the AD converter, and we're going to get the negative version of that. So we'll get our a and D controls strapped to these spud guns. There we go. So now I can drive around, steer, and shoot spud guns, all without having to take my hand off of WASD and the mouse. So that's really the advantage of having a lot of these camera controlled vehicles, that you don't have to fiddle around with changing your controls to like other letters on the keyboard, or you don't have to, you know, move your hand in an awkward way to hit those number buttons. Very cool. So let's see how it works. Uh, first, I'm just gonna remove this uh, the spud gun stuff. I mean, you saw me build that. That's uh, it's a pretty easy setup. The first bit of logic that you need, besides your normal car build, is a compass reading for the body of the car. So you need to know which direction, which compass direction your car, your car body is actually facing. And then we're gonna need a compass direction for the camera angle relative to the car. So again, a simple orientation setup. You just have the orientation block to an AD converter to an engine just to spin a bearing that spins the orientation block. Like all orientation setups, they want to point to their target. So this, uh, this three block setup is just to make sure that the orientation block actually faces the camera direction. And then we stick an exometer onto that, getting the compass direction of this orientation block, which will be independent. Let me just, uh, oops. Let me just, uh, drive my car around a little bit. So as you can see, that orientation block will be independent no matter which way the car body is facing. The orientation block will always point to where our camera is pointing. I can't, I can't look at the front of that thing even if I wanted to. So then we're gonna get the compass reading, the, the white compass and the black compass. So this is gonna be our camera minus our car body. And we're gonna get the difference between the two. So this is gonna be a difference in degrees. Let me actually uh, put some output here so that you can see the difference in degrees. So this is going to give us an output, uh, be, I think it's going to be between uh, negative 180 and positive 180. 
or 360. <laughs> that was a much larger number than I was expecting. But it all depends on which way your car is facing or the, the camera is facing. Point is that it's just a repeating pattern of the difference in degrees. And then we're going to take the sine function and we're going to just plop that right into the sine function. So the interesting thing about the sine function or a sine wave, as you might know it, uh, is that especially in degrees, when you're using the sine function in the degree variant, um, it's every 90 degrees is a uh, is a different value. So sine the sine of zero degrees is zero. I'm pretty sure. Uh, the sine of 90 degrees is one, and then the wave goes back down at to zero at 180, and then 270 it goes to negative one. And 360, it's back to zero, and then it's just a repeating wave pattern. Now, for those visual learners out there, that probably makes a lot of sense. But for the non-visual learners, I, I, I don't know exactly how to explain to you. I'm a visual learner myself, so that's how I understand it. But the point is that the sine function is going to output a value between 1 and negative 1. So we're going to take that sine value, and we're going to connect it all the way up here at the front to a multiplication value. So this multiplication value, all we're doing, uh, you can ignore these tick buttons. We don't actually need them in our build. I just use these to set custom values in these counters. So the value that I set into this counter is 40, I believe. Why don't we put a, uh, why don't we put a display on that so that I can make sure it's actually 40. There you go, it's set to 40, okay. So again, we're gonna just take the degree the, the, the sign of the whatever the difference in these angles are and we're gonna feed that into this multiplication block so we're just timesing 40 by some number between negative 1 and 1 based on the sine wave function and then that just goes straight into the smart engine if you use them before you know that any other color is the target angle where it starts to behave like a controller where you can set a very specific angle so now you can see where the sine wave multiplication actually comes into play where we're multiplying the bearing angle for our steering to 40 degrees or negative 40 degrees depending on which way that we're actually looking and the white counter block over here is just to set the speed of the engine how fast the smart engine is going to try to reach 40 degrees or negative 40 degrees and that's it it's actually a pretty it's a relatively simple build um, I don't actually think that this is like super super useful. I do think it's interesting to drive around and I will be posting this on the workshop So the workshop link will be in the description down below and if you want to check out any of the other orientation block videos I'll be I, I guess I'm gonna create a playlist. I don't know. I might just be lazy and not create a playlist so But that means more work for me, and I have to link all the other video whatever I'm gonna link all the other videos down in the description below if you want to see how I built all those other tank steering system and camera control turret so you can watch uh, all these videos in series if you really want to and figure out how to play around with this number logic stuff yourself so again I don't really think that there's any point to building a car like this but using the number logic you just gotta sort of jump into it and start building things like it's it's best to jump into the number logic with a goal in mind um, so in this case it was just like I'm gonna build a car that controls the steering with the camera and you know it's a kind of a pointless goal, but the point is just to get into the uh, just to get into the number logic, just to get used to it. And the more you get used to it, uh, the more you start to see its potential. Like this number logic stuff, you can really do almost anything with it. It's amazing the the stuff that you can do with it. Even if the stuff that you want to do has no point to it, it's still a lot of fun. So that's it for today's video. If you like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And I think in the next video, we're gonna be taking a look at a camera controlled plane logic. Now that the mod pack has the new uh, wing parts that have number logic control flap things, we're gonna try and create a plane that uses the new wing parts and the uh, camera control or orient number logic parts as well. So as always, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!